Hello, as you can see, this is not your regularly scheduled programming because we want a little more time to work on the episode. We're getting a special guest, uh, Brains Games, from the Giant Woman episode again, so hopefully you'll enjoy that. I decided it should be a special one because it's the end of Season 1A, as it's called. So I thought I'd give a little site update in general. So as I discussed in my vlog on Friday, I am interested in producing a literary criticism series. Uh, this will be one of those infotainment series. This will be talking about literary concepts, so death of the author, explaining that a bit more. Uh, writing guides, so I'll go further in, in detail into making characters. In fact, that's the first block I'm planning, is a very detailed guide, guide on character creation, because that's, I feel, one of my strongest points as a writer. And also just general literary criticism, so examining texts and making interesting points where I think I can. I need to find, figure out how to present the show visually. I'm intending it to be a mixture of vlog-style filming and general animated stuff, but I'm still determining the style. I did try to mock up some things for you today, but I didn't have time to put them to a standard I'd show you. But in general, I intend it to look like a infotainment series, so think Crash Course animated segments, or um, Extra Credits, if you know that show. Or think of zero punctuation, that kind of very simple, simple animation. While I have some experience with animation, I'm not totally proficient with it. It's been a while <laughs> since I did it, to be honest. But I think it's worth. I think it's a skill worth relearning for the, this show. This will be a monthly show. Uh, what I'm calling the expletives of regulars. These will be a bit higher quality, hopefully, because we'll have more time to work on them. Uh, so there'll be a little a little less slapdash than our weekly content has been, though we are still trying to improve everything. Um, because we're enjoying doing this, I mean, I have enjoy I enjoy doing this weekly content with you guys, and I hope you're enjoying it. Another regular show that we've got planned is, um, that we've probably talked about before, uh, and this was actually the origin of What the Folk. Originally we were going to do a series where we'd record short stories that we'd written, then record uh, them a as a reading, and, and sort of build up a fantasy world this way, because both me and Dan really love pulp fantasy stories. He's very much into uh, the R.A. Salvatore novels, and I'm a big fan of sort of older pulp novels, so things like Robert E. Howard, Edgar Rice Burroughs, I like pulp science fiction and fantasy, it's a lot of fun. I've been reading a lot of Jank Vance recently, actually. Once again, the problem is presenting these visually, because we could produce a lot of art for these, but this obviously requires more time, that's why it's going to be in a regular show. We're also intending, I'm intending to produce some animated introductions for the weekly shows, and probably will for the irregulars as well if I have time, just to make things a bit more professional around here. We're just two guys with camera and editing equipment, really. What I'll do now is I'll read you a section from that first fancy short that we're going to start the show with. Uh, it's still unfinished because I'm very lazy. But I, I think it'll give you an idea of <clears throat> I think it'll give you an idea of what we're writing towards, sort of that kind of style of pulp. Please note this is an un unfinished, unedited story, but I'm you know, I'm a one draft kind of guy. As you can probably tell from the videos. So um, listen and enjoy and I'll get back to you in a second. In the county of Delos Nave can be seen a very unusual sight for our more ordered age. There lives a wizard who can be seen tramping down the county lanes, byways, greenways, forest paths and goat tracks. You may ask, does not the archseer Gerlebold leave his manse to get a fowl for the pot, or Torquist the weirdling come down from his tower to feel the green grass beneath his feet? Alas, no. The simple pleasures are denied to these peers at the unknown. They are forever hopping and skittering to where they are needed most and never do they walk. They ride in carriages pulled by shadow beasts, or jump through the air riding on their long pipes, or simply arrive in a tongue of flame. Their methods of expediency are untold. But we were talking of Heimroth, the thrice shrod, wanderer of Delos Nave County. Heimroth's home was something no one could ever be sure of, excepting Heimroth, of course. All that could be said for sure was that it was where he needed it in the morning and where he wanted it at night. You could be tending your cows when suddenly a pretty stone cottage would be taking up most of your field. It's no use marching through the gate and hammering on the door. 
and all you'll get is... And excuse me, as Heinroth hops out the door, tugging on his boots. So Heinroth was walking down one of the county lanes, with the morning's farmer a-hollering and yelling behind him. It was a fair summer's morning, and the first of the day's heat was beginning to thicken the air. Heinroth began to whistle an ancient ballad as he stepped through the sunshine. Soon he came to a crossroads, and, as to his custom, Heinroth took his staff in hand and lofted it into the air. It soared over the high hedge and fell with a thud, looking down the lanes and seeing no obvious means of entry. Heinroth began to push his way through the hedge. Let it never be said there's a dignified way of climbing through a hedge. So bruised and battered, his leggings torn, Heinroth tumbled out of the hedge and looked down into a shaded valley. The morning mist still clung to the valley's side, swirling in the dark places. This valley was a sickly place. Everything was stunted and awful yellowed. The only thing that grew straight and strong were the weeds. Nettles as tall as a man, and Belladonna and her brood running rampant, their purple bloom making mock of all the sickness around. Heimroth stood looking down at all this, brows knitted to make a great fuzzy line. He knew this. Oh, he knew it. As well as he knew his boots. And that's the sort of introductory portion of that story. So I hope that gives you some idea of the kind of writing, at least I'm aiming towards. I don't know if Dan will pick up this series as well. He's not as comfortable with his writing, I think, but I know he can write well. So that's all the news. I'd also like to plug something. Uh, I watched a cartoon this morning, as is my want. I, I like to watch cartoons. And I, I don't think I've laughed so much in a long time. It's called Golan the Insatiable. <laughs> Uh, it's a wonderful story about a demon king from hell who's summoned to earth by a little goth girl. Now, if that doesn't melt your heart, nothing will. An evil barbarian warlord from hell and a little goth girl wreaking havoc. It's hilarious. It really is. They're in Minnesota. Where the chief export is Minnesota Nice. So you have a cynical goth girl and a dark lord of hell in Minnesota. It's very funny. I've only seen the first episode. It's recent. It's in its second season, but the second season is a retelling of the first with a different cast. So I'm just watching the second season and I'm seeing it play out. I think there are longer episodes as well. So check that out uh, if you have time. And that's everything. So thank you. Sorry for the lack of proper content today, but hopefully this will keep you by for a few minutes. Wednesday's What the Folk is me again. Uh, I'll be reading Greek myth. So that'll be fun. <laughs>